box two box is back with another video millie what are we doing on the first video of the new year Ooh. we're gonna start this new year off with a bang you guys really like the underrated 11 video we are doing the overrated 11 draft boys i want to see who you guys pick i wasn't too interested in talking about underrated players but overrated i will be there varvar the people voted you had the best underrated 11 team you get to go first now, you guys say I have low ball knowledge. I don't know. Every single challenge about ball knowledge, I win. So, I don't know. I don't know. Do I actually have low ball knowledge? That's Does debatable. He win every, you, I think that might have been one of your first wins ever. I think we say that every time I win, which is a lot. Um, first overall pick, Varvar FC. We're going to be selecting the most overrated player in the world, Robert Lewandowski. Put him right into my team. That's my star player right there because of how overrated he is. That's the star player. That is crazy. That's not that crazy. That is insane. That's over. That's honestly, he hasn't been performing this season. I okay. see. That's a, that's a I shout. agree. Even in his prime, this brother was overrated. Look, okay, no. Comment down. Comment down. We agreed on the first pick. But don't worry. The only reason he's rated today is because of what he did like five years ago. And five years ago, he wasn't as good as people made him out to be. Because La Liga, Bundesliga, this is showing that Bundesliga is an inferior league to La Liga. Because I don't think Lewandowski, I don't think Lewandowski got much worse talent-wise. I don't no, think he got I much disagree. worse talent-wise either. And I he's struggling in La Liga. I agree. So that's says something about the league. No, but you're comparing a Lewandowski that's basically out of his prime to a Lewandowski that was literally in the peak of his prime at Bayern Munich. Was, was Lewandowski ever Ballon d'Or level winning player? Yes. Mm, disagree. He, Maybe two he, years ago. He almost won disagree. a Ballon d'Or. Yeah, but so they, had to make an, they had to make an he award. He was overrated. They had to make an award so that he would have won the Ballon d'Or. Because FIFA couldn't fathom giving the Ballon d'Or to Robert Lewandowski. Because it's the same situation like a lot of German players. They're not like all plastered over the media, so you just don't rate them. Look, we'll let the comments decide. I think Lewandowski is easily the most overrated player in the world. Pala, I think you go second. I do have second pick, and I, it might be crazier than your first pick because it needs to be said that Neymar Jr. That's the worst pick of the draft. Is one of, if not the most overrated footballers of all time. I'll, that is, that's, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I could maybe accept like current. Like you're talking about like Neymar, Neymar, like Neymar, 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 the one of the most talented players of all time at the same. That's actually very hard to do both those things at the same time. But for how much talent this guy had, I feel betrayed low key because I was a crazy Neymar stand when he was like on the way up at Barca and even before. But his career, he's going to retire with barely anything to show for how talented he was. I feel betrayed low key. That's great because his his mid is everyone else's peak, like beyond peak. I agree. That, that, that's, that's exactly why I agree. On Neymar's worst day, he is still one of the best players. But, but listen, even now, there's Bra in Brazil, there's, there's Vinicius, Rodrigo, all these talented attackers, Martinelli, and he's still by far the best attacker for Brazil. By far the most talented of them. Best. Okay, because he actually- Look at the World Cup. The brother carried them to where they got. This, this overrated pick, is almost setting aside his international appearances because it's the only place where he cares about the game. He's made nothing but money choices his entire career. And you can agree on that. That's crazy. No, his PSG most was not a money choice. Well, it was not driven by fame. It wasn't driven by legacy. It wasn't it driven was. by the sport. No, he went to the same reason why Zlatan went, the same reason why a bunch of other big players went. It's for the bag. And now he just reaffirmed that theory by making another big money move to completely end his career. I completely disagree, Melly. Who are you picking? That Neymar shout is wild, but Millie FC will be selecting the man who replaced Neymar at PSG. Give me Usman Dembele, one of the most overrated wingers in the entire world right now. Look, he kind of took my pick. I, I think that's not a terrible choice. I think, I think if he wasn't injury prone, he wouldn't be anywhere near this list. Fair, but that's part of, that's part of Usman Dembele. I agree. I also agree that he is a top, top player, but for the money that Barcelona have spent on him, PSG have spent on him, he has not been up to par. He has not even had a season with double-digit goals. Do could you believe that's, that? Is that for real? That is for real. No, that's insane. Well, I mean, but when I checked, it's insane. Dembele isn't much of a goal scorer. Yeah, but still, for that money, you got to be scoring at least double digits. That's man. like Grealish. Goals. Like, like even Grealish got double digits. Yeah, but like, Grealish has been hiding behind the. But he's not meant to score goals or assists. Yeah, but Dembele. 
he Dembele is meant to score goals and assists. I see more assists than anything. I disagree. Listen, he does get double digit assists, but the goal scoring, the overall ability, and his injury proneness, not it for me. Varvar, you get to go next. No, Millie, you get to go next. Varvar, you're doing a better hosting job than I am, clearly. I do get to go next. I'm gonna take a central midfielder, Federico Valverde. What? Yeah. No, that's He has crazy. been the worst midfielder for Real Madrid this season. That's by like saying, far. That's like saying Neymar was the worst player in MSN. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> no. just wild. No, you have Camavinga, Chouameni, Cruz, Modric, all performing better than him. He has not been on the score sheet. He has not been assisting. He's just been there. At one point, he was being insane. I agree. He I was agree. scoring those long shots. At I that agree. Time. I agree completely. At one point, he was over it. But right now, I think his stocks are so low. Well, they're relatively low to where Fair. he should be. He so, starts in majority of Premier League teams. Oh, 100%. I, I think City is the only one. Who, he debatably gets into City also. Fair. But like Arsenal, I would love to have Valverde. Obviously, any team would love to have Valverde. Valverde being on Real Madrid already puts him in that echelon. When people have that conversation, he is one of the best. And I personally don't think he is not. That's why I picked him. But Pala, you get to pick next. If you guys didn't hate me for Neymar, you're going to hate me for this one. My, my choice is Pedri. I just I, I needed to give a little pause there. <laughs> you see, Barca fans, exactly. don't come at me today. It's not, it's not me that's meant to get the ripping. It's him. Don't, don't come at me either after just listen to the next couple sentences okay pedri i think he's a pretty good player he's i think an he's amazing a, i think player. he's an amazing player but for barca fans to think there is a chance that you can build a successful dynasty around pedri you are absolutely insane that's the equivalent of saying that real madrid could build an insane team around modric Modric is an insane player, but you cannot build a legacy around a player like that. He just doesn't warrant that level of respect. Millie, I cannot believe what was just said. <laughs> he's, a, he's an automatic pick for Spain. He's already like put in so many international caps. He's playing, started for Barca. The, the player has the ability to be one of the best. I don't think he's overrated. Millie, watch this. Varvar, where would you put Pedri in your young midfielders in the world ranking? S tier. And where Either would you put him? S or high, what number? High a. What number would you put him? I think Gavi and Jude Bellingham are better, so that's where huh? I would put. And that's an Pedri. elite group. That, those are certified elite. Gavi? Gavi, yeah. I just added another person to my list. <laughs> okay. I think it's my choice now, no? Varvar, it is your choice. I hope you don't pick Gavi. So I got my elite overrated striker. I got Lewandowski, top of the top, creme de la creme of overrated players. Okay. Now I need to get the creme de la creme at central defender. You want some okay. creme? I want some creme. Listen. I need some creme in my life. I need to be filled with this creme. I'm going to take Ruben Diaz oh. as my most overrated central defender in the world. How this guy won a player of the season in the Premier League baffles me. It absolutely baffles me. This guy... He, he's the worst ball playing person in Pep's team. But Even the goal he's better he than He doesn't need to be ball playing. He's not good. He's not an athletic freak. He's not. He's not. Let's pretty just athletic. Put it, let's just put it real here. Pretty he's athletic. Not a, he's not a pretty athletic. He's not a Rudiger. He wasn't a prime Van Dyke. Like at no point was he physically imposing where it would actually scare you to come up against Ruben okay. Diaz. Next aspect. Technically, he's not there. He's not. He's not at the. He's not defensive? at the John Stones level. He's not defensive at the, technical abilities. Are you just talking about? No, I'm talking about technical ability, passing the ball, dribbling oh. through midfield. Like, he doesn't need to do that, though. So, is this a player of the season player? Varvar, can you name a bad Ruben Diaz performance? Like, terrible enough that you remember it clearly. I mean, he does get dominated by a lot of strikers. Like, but not to the point where you're saying, oh my god, he's one of the worst ever. I think... I think he might be the worst center back at Man City. I'm saying it right now. That's, that, be, that's just, that just, that, there's no, nonsense. No, nonsense. Literally it's nonsense. It's not nonsense. That's Tom Fuller. Get that John, mumbo Stone, jumbo out John of Stones is better. Like clear, levels clear. Okay, okay? but get to the bottom. Akanji, Akanji. Akanji, Akanji's better than Ruben Diaz. More All versatile, better on the ball, physically. Someone put this man on Twitter. I'm going to throw the veto at his face. <laughs> Gvardiol, I might take Gvardiol. I don't rate Gvardiol that much, but I might take Gvardiol <laughs> over him. <laughs> Why are you guys shitting? Calma, calma. He's on my list. <laughs> don't worry, we'll talk about him later. We'll talk about him later. <laughs> oh, 
wait, I get hold another on, pick. Hold, hold on, on. <laughs> hold on. I get another pick, no, after Ruben Diaz? Yeah, you do get another pick. I'm gonna follow up Ruben Diaz with a right back that might be very debatable. I'm taking Reese James because- Oh, my pick, you took my pick. The there. brother cannot play more than two games straight. That's it's a good actually pick. scary. No, because at some point in a, in a man's career, in an injured, injury prone player's career, you gotta start thinking, does this take away from the player's ability? Because on ability, he's debatably the best right back in the world. It's debatable. Like I think he is. But what uh, ability are you watching if he's not playing? Exactly. exactly. That's the point. Like people are still using 2020 Reese James to talk about now Reese James. It's like you and Lukaku. It, no, no, no. <laughs> Lukaku is Lukaku. Okay, is my, oh, he's looking out at that list. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no Lukaku's not here. You. Lukaku's not here. He's right he's here. Underrated. He's, he's right here on my underrated right list. But uh, Reese James, incredible player. But you got to be an incredible player for more than like seven games a year. Facts. I agree. Pala, you get to go next. For the eighth pick in the overrated draft, I'm going to take a player that I didn't even think was rated. But then I looked on Twitter and not only do PSG fans rate him, but casuals all over the world rate him. I'm going to go with Hakimi. That's a good pick. That's I had him on my list. He was on my list. That's an unfair pick, in my opinion. Not fair whatsoever. Because you're picking out on a, you're picking a player because he's playing out of position, and you're saying he's overrated. But the quality is there. Inter got away with one of the biggest robberies of all time. <laughs> no, Millie. I don't know what you're talking about. Dumfries for Hakimi. I don't know. Like that seemed like. Inter got their money's worth with that swap. Like they got an extra 50 mil plus a worse player. And and what did PSG get? PSG got a player that his only success since he's transferred was the World Cup. And his second biggest success was taking half of his baby mama's money. That's that's <laughs> But Hakimi is not playing as a right wing back. He's playing as a pure right back. That's that was never his position to begin with. But at what point does that become what a liability? He? He's only a three back player. You he can only play that. one yeah. Exactly, but you can't be considered one of the best in the world at your position when you can only play one position. Thank you. I could see the argument for overrated, but when he's playing out of position and you have Milan Skriniar next to you and then Ousmane Dembele running up the pitch, not helping you back defensively, you're just isolated all the time. It's not necessarily his fault. He's a top quality player. I think he'd start at any team. And just one last thing, Rem reminder, he played in a four back at Dortmund, if I'm pretty, like I'm pretty sure. That I can't recall. He I did, and he, he linked up with Sancho, I think. Yeah. He Sancho. has the quality. Streets anyway. won't forget you, bro. Millie, it's your pick. Paolo, we are going to agree to disagree on the Hakimi pick, but up next, I will be picking the Tottenham man, Christian Romero. This man is a bum and is overly rated. <laughs> I agree, Millie, completely. Okay. I'm glad you agree. I don't agree, but I can see how a calm and a casual like you two would agree. <laughs> oh, oh there we go. <laughs> A red card every game. <laughs> he had 27 red, yellow cards last season and four red cards. If you're not playing versus the biggest games, it's just the same story. Defending, he's amazing at defending. But he's clumsy. He's getting those yellow cards because he doesn't know how to properly defend and control his own body. He he feels like a walking mistake. It's like it's like a player I'm going to announce in a couple of minutes. Like he's just, uh, you, you feel stressed when he's playing. Last season, I think... I could be wrong. He got like four cards or five red cards, let's say. Of the games that he missed, I think Spurs picked up maybe w like one point out of those four games. Okay, okay. I'm not, we're not doubting that he's a yeah, he's player. important. He's a decent player. Yeah, he he's a good to player Tottenham. to Tottenham. But he's not in the... Tottenham fans like to put him in a echelon that he shouldn't be in, first of all. What echelon is that? Best center back in yeah, the Yeah, in the Prem. No. Best tier they try telling no. us he's the best center back in the Prem type vibes. I think it's a good pick. But I don't think he's that overrated I whatsoever. Think, I, I think, I think he is he's overly rated. For, I think for his ability to be put in the same category as the top center backs in the world, like getting compared to Rudiger, like that type of level, come on now. Oh, hold up on Rudiger. Hold on there. <laughs> With the 10th overall selection, Millie FC will be selecting Gabriel Martinelli. He has not been the performer that Arsenal have needed this season. He's been okay, but not at the level that people have been talking about. That's why he's starting in my squad. Millie, I want to ask you, what were your expectations for Martinelli this Premier League season? My expectations for him were to be one of the best producing players on that Arsenal squad, and he has not lived up to that expectation. He's barely, he hasn't really assisted. He hasn't, doesn't really score either. He's basically just, facilitates and that's about it that's not the role that people expected him to have this season 
and he's still the best left winger in the Premier League. That's a lie. <laughs> oh my okay. God. That's only, overrated right there. That's other, overrated. The only other two players that were in contention before this season were Rashford and Luis Diaz. Okay, but Rashford's been not good this season. Okay, and Luis Diaz has and, not been good this season. Okay, but Martinelli, it's ba basically a battle of the mid. Well, he's so, still the best. How can you be the best left winger in the Prem Mitoma. and still be overrated? Mitoma. Mitoma. <laughs> I'm tired of the hipsters, man. I'm tired. <laughs> But Martinelli was propped up to be one of the best wingers, not just in the Prem, but in the world. And he is not even close to that right now. That's why I'm picking him as one of my overrated players. And and don't forget that this brother does not play a crucial role for Brazil either. This guy's not a barely. player for Brazil. Yeah, barely. barely in the squad. Brazil, you're talking about one of the most star-studded teams in the world. Okay, but, but if he's one of the best, he should be in there. Forces himself in that team. Rafinha plays for Brazil week in, week out almost. Right winger. Yeah. Get, in, get yourself into damn, the team. Damn, you got me. Get yourself into the team, bro. Anyway, I got next pick. And Pala, who are you picking? Millie, I, I had a different pick, but because you started talking about wingers, I got another left winger. I have Cavara Dona, Cavara Scalia. Overrated should be his name. Is if this only Firms would hear? Yeah. If only Firms was here, he said he was underrated last that, video. That's this guy made an appearance in the underrated and overrated draft. That's one for the generation. That's uh, a generational. Player I right think now. he's severely overrated. Bro gets pocketed by every Serie A team except for except for like the bottom table relegation teams. We try to tell Firms, man. I try to veto that. Look, I'm gonna sit here and defend them because I think the brother right now is underrated. I think right, right. Look, I'm not going to say underrated. He's That's crazy. rated right now. He's perfectly rated because he's still a good player. Like, there's still a player he in there. He is a good there. player. He's, there's still a player in there somewhere. But I'm going to ask you, if, if somebody came to Napoli last summer and said, uh, Premier League team, here, we're going to give you $75 million for Cavaraschelia, you're going to say yes. No. No, I don't think Napoli would 75 say yes. million. No, is Napoli not wouldn't, but I would. $75 million is not enough. Oziman, see, Oziman, I think, is the real deal. Yes, he's the more important player. Yeah, I think he's the real deal compared to Cavada. Cavada was, he just had an amazing season last season. I think he's still a good player, but to think like this guy like hops into a Premier League team and just becomes one of the best players in the world is so. completely insane. I think it depends which Premier League team he would join. I think it would. Before we get to Varvar's pick, we just wanted to say thank you all for the immense support. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We are on the road to 100K. Your support lets us make better videos in the future. Boys, make a pick. I get back-to-back -back choices here. So I'm gonna go for a center mid right now with my first of the two choices. I'm gonna take Enzo Fernandez. Oh my God. Because- That's the worst, that's the worst pick of the draft. I would veto the living Why? out of that. Why? That's the worst pick veto? of the draft. Are you vetoing? But what's, what is veto even? What is? I want this to be on your team because that means your team's gonna be worse than mine for okay, overrated. Okay, good. So then he wants me to pick Enzo that's, Fernandez. Yeah, that's, that's a horrible pick. That's a terrible. This pick. brother is honestly a liability for Chelsea. Like this guy does not watch a single. He Chelsea does, game. does not. I do. I watch every single Chelsea with, game because Rose, I like to make fun of the Chelsea fans. With rose tinted lenses on, Enzo is the most important player to that team. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. The brother cannot run. He he's legitimately. Like, he's so clunky on the field. He cannot defend the counter. It reminds me of Kimmich, if Kimmich played in the Premier League. Because he shouldn't be defending counters. He's in a solo, a solo role. What's his role. position? What's his position, Paolo? What, what, like, what do you, what position? Where he Is plays? he a defensive midfielder? No, he's not. Is he an attacking midfielder? No, he's not. I would, play, a, I would play Enzo Fernandez as a box to box. And he can't run box to box. That's the thing. He's so sluggish and so clunky. He cannot play box to box. If you said he's Moses Caicedo, enough. he's not fit enough to play box to box. I don't agree. Leagues. I completely disagree. With I think in less athletic leagues like Serie A or La Liga, he would be able to play that box to box role. But in the Premier League, he does not have the legs to play that box to box role. That's why Chelsea always get countered on because they they have. Midfielders who can't defend counters. But is that because they're pushing everyone too high up? He's just a very limited player. Like, it all basically only fits in La Liga's play style. In my opinion, That's personally, crazy. it only fits in La Liga. Varvar, try to redeem yourself. You got another pick. And for this next pick, I'm going to go left wing with Jao Felix. I'm going to take Jao Felix at left wing. I pick. think this brother is insanely overrated. I used to say he had Ballon d'Or potential, so I was part of the people rating. I said that too. Yeah, so... I think right now, like he, he, I think it's done for him. I think it's done for, for him at the elite level. He doesn't put in enough defensive work. He's always like, it shows like he just does not care at all. 
This brother, I, I've said this multiple times. This brother's gone to Al Hilal this summer. That that would be a good. I mean, has his name footballing wise, time. it wouldn't be a good choice for him, but money wise, it would be a good choice. He listen. He does have that quality. I think everyone saw that quality when he was just young, getting into Atletico Madrid. But I gotta agree with him. I don't think he's been the player that everyone propped him up to be, especially at Barcelona. And they the thought he was gonna be the savior. savior at the Barca. beginning of the year. He got goals and assists for Barca that covered up what his defensive work was and what people just work? saw no defensive work. Exactly, exactly. So it's just what he brings to the team is not worth the negatives that he also brings with him. And for some reason that is valued much, much more than his negatives for some reason. Yeah, I, I that's actually a good pick. I think it was on all of our lists. It was on my list. It's a shame I am ripping Barca and ex-Barca players all day today. But my next pick is no surprise. I think Barca fans might even be able to agree with me. I'm going to go with Gundogan. Ooh. I agree. Yeah, I was thinking about that name. Right but, now, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. We all agree. <laughs> but I agree, I agree, I agree. But I think Barca fans are starting to kind of turn on Gundogan also because they feel like they kind of just got, they got scammed with the player that... <laughs> He was Scammer at City. gets scammed. <laughs> Scammer, yeah, gets, no, that's what I'm thinking Scammer gets scammed. <laughs> that's literally what happened with Gundogan. But I agree, he hasn't been the player that people thought he was going to be, especially at Barcelona. They thought he was going to get unlocked. But a surprise to like basically everyone because at Manchester City, his brother looked like he was one of the more important players. But this goes back to the fact that no player leaves Pep and gets better. It does not happen. It You can't name one instance. If you can think of one, leave it in the comments to me. It has not happened it's once. True. Pep knows Pep knows his players. Yeah, he knows how to use them best. And someone's gonna some person's gonna go down in the comments and say like Cole Palmer or something, but like that okay, doesn't, no, that's true. That that's doesn't true. count. That doesn't count. It should it should count actually. He, he was too young. Palo with the Gundingen shout. I'm sure some Barca fans will agree. But up next, I will be picking for my central attacking midfielder. Give me the Roma man, Paolo Dybala. I think he has been severely overrated this season. He, th one of the best players in Serie A? Absolutely not. I agree with you, Millie. I, I agree. actually, I disagree with you. Uh, listen, former Juventino, Dybala, he has the quality. Former I wish he was at a team. Oh, Dybala, <laughs> yeah, I thought he was about you. <laughs> I'm, a Juve I'm still here. I ain't leaving. Look, Dybala by himself is a fantastic player, but in a Mourinho system, heavy defensive work, he is just not that guy. Even for Argentina, he does not feature at all. He's not a significant player. But for some reason, people always seem to think he is La Joya. But to me, he's not. He's overrated. Very similar to João Felix, in my opinion. Like, what he brings at to all. the table, to a team like Roma, it's worth it. Because a lot of the players you could replace him with don't really do much. But with, with it's different because Dybala, you know what you're getting. You knew you were getting a player that could get injured very often. You knew he wasn't going to put in defensive work. João Felix, people were buying him with the expectation like, oh, we can mold him because he's young. So would you say that he becomes worth it in that opinion? He, he's one of the highest earners at Roma, but first of all. I think it's worth it for the club. For the club, I, I agree. Did you I see think, how much it did for the city? Yeah, exactly. Like It brought Roma to a different level of exposure and everything. Is this but, your pick or my pick? No, no, this is my, but <laughs> I'm saying the pick, it's like the, the move itself was, it makes sense for Roma, but the player individually, insanely overrated. I like people actually still think he's like 25. Like, you know what I mean? I think it's a good shout because if you just were to pop up on Instagram and look, you would probably think Dybala is one of the best Serie A players. He he's always not. ends up getting featured somewhere for his work rate ability, whatever. But to me, he's just not that guy. Got to respect that SPC. If you haven't done player of the month Dybala, yeah, Mill, he won a player of the month in Serie A. Anyway, get to your next pick. Overrated award, in my opinion. He literally just won player of the month. With my next pick, I'm gonna go left back. The man usually plays center back, but he's able to play a left back. Give me Josko Vardiol. I think this player, for what he is worth, people just look back at his World Cup performance and say he's one of the best. To me, he's just he's just a top he's just a top center back. He's not that great. I don't I even think he's a top center back. He's on my list. He was almost my next pick. He. How much did Man City? Man City almost spent a hundred mil on. I think it was like but 90. no one says anything. Do you know how insane that is? But no one says anything because he's City. It's not Chelsea. It's not the United. If that was Manchester United, Rip. we we bought Harry Maguire for eighty something. Okay, that was a while ago. Harry though. Maguire was better this first season than Gavardiol his first season. He's, he has not really been relevant, Gavardiol, for Man City this season. Like, he's been okay. He's put in a good shift here and there, but he's not the difference maker that I think they thought he was going to be. 
I agree. But I like I like that Pep does that. Regardless of how much a player costs, he doesn't put pride into the equation because he wanted Vardiol, so he has to play Vardiol to justify the price tag. If he plays somebody, realizes, damn, we got scammed, he'll just sit him out. And like, that's what he's doing in Vardiol. But he has like, that ability to. Like, Nathan Ake is a good player, but he's not at that elite pushing the top of the top level. And he can't misplace, he can't displace Ake in the team. So for me, like Vardio, 100 mil was just spent on him. One of the top young center backs. They compared this man to like Maldini during the World Cup. So overrated. So overrated. This World Cup led to a lot of players getting wrongfully sold. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't base your judgment on one international tournament because international football is so different. Barbara, listen to that back after and then let's talk about Sofia and Amrabat. You got me. I'm glad the boys agree with my pick. Pala, who are you picking? Barca fans. I did you dirty today. It's time for the Real fans to get done dirty. Uh, at center back, I'm picking Rudiger. <laughs> oh my God, it. that's the worst pick of the draft that's, by hear far. Me out. The worst. Hear me out. If this guy wasn't such of a physical demon and just great for TikTok clips, defending wise, outside of a three back, Rudiger is just not that good. Bro, that is such a terrible shout. I think Varvar picked him for underrated. Yes, he's an insane four-back defender. He's not, though. He is. He's he's honestly, I think he played the most minutes for Real Madrid last year. What does that get? Like, what, what, what does that do for me? He's the most consistent. He's, he's consistently mid. No. <laughs> he, just, no. he just chokes people. He bodies people. He's an aggressive demon. He's a physical demon. But... Aside from his Chelsea days, like he's been nothing but, I mean, it's all right. That oh is the definition of worst pick of the draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People think he's one of the best center backs in the world. Top five, which he is not. Oh, oh brother. Oh no. That is ridiculous. And for my pick, I'm going to go right wing. I'm just going to rip off the bandaid. Let's make it quick because there's going to be an outrageous reaction here. Federico Chiesa. <laughs> my reaction to that statement. <laughs> Why? You don't think he's overrated? I don't even think anyone rates him. No, actually, I don't think he's overrated. He, I think he's, I think people understood like what he is. still like has the aura, aura of his Euro run while not having any of the ability. But he saved How Italy literally for this Euro qualification. Against who? Against it, who? Didn't matter. We, what? We've lost World Cup qualifications and Euro qualifications to teams way worse than us. Because he's been out. Because he's been out. But we didn't make the World Cup because of him. That doesn't mean... Does that mean that Chiesa's underrated or does that mean that Italy's attackers are all terrible? Well, no, I, I it's a mix a of both. Player. It's a mix of both. But Chiesa right now doesn't have the same fandom he used to have when it was Euro 2020 run. That's three years ago. Yeah, but... Go on inter uh, go on inter TikTok on Juve TikTok. I'm on it. People are still. I am it. I know. <laughs> people are still posting compilations of Chiesa because like he has that aura. Yeah, but the aura doesn't justify what we're seeing on the pitch. No, is that, it's like a Dybala a thing. It's but like it, a Dybala thing. Like he's he's after injury, he's washed. But is that is that an Allegri tax with Chiesa? Lost his pace. He does not have the pace oh anymore. Oh my God, you didn't, you have not watched Juventus. He does not watch a have game, the bro. pace anymore. Watch a game, please. He, his explosiveness is still, it's just insane, insane. His cut in, oh my God. You need to watch Chiesa. Syria tax, man. If you're talking Ridiculous. about him losing his pace, you're, you're, you're wrongfully accusing him of being overrated. Wrongfully accused. Put me in, put me in shackles. I'll put you in handcuffs. Box to box court about to get crazy. So to follow up Chiesa, this one, I, I, I think it's justified. Some Prem fans might not want to speak to me in the comments. I'm going to pick Bruno Gamerish because same exact reasons as, as Enzo Fernandez. The brother is unathletically not up to the par of the Premier League. It's another one of those players. Move to La Liga, move to Serie A. He'd be a demon. Technically, he's at that level. But physically, that's where he, he falls a bit short. And the fact that this brother up until last year was battling Fred for the midfield spot in the Brazil starting 11 was like red flags there, you know? So I'm picking Bruno Gomes. That's crazy because I think people would say Bruno Gomes is perfectly rated. I, I think that's a good example of a perfectly rated player. I think he's overrated. I think that he wouldn't be able to cut it at a top, top team. I think the issue was that people overrated Newcastle as a team, like as a whole. So he was obviously but part he's of the that face of that. Uh, not really like uh, he's the Isaac face of newcastle no isaac I, when i think of newcastle i think of 
Bruno Guimaraes. I don't think of Alexander Isak. No. I don't think of anyone, to be honest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe Kieran Trippier. I'll throw, throw in Trippier. But no, it's just that's a team, a successful team as a whole. I don't think of individuals. But the team, the team itself had such high expectations, so that Bruno Guimaraes had high expectations to do well in the Prem, and he hasn't really been. Like fantastic, he's been good, but he hasn't been fantastic. Uh, so I, I think that's a it's a fair shout. My next pick, next to Stinky Gundogan, I'm gonna go with Renato Sanchez, Golden Boy winner, 2016. That that just that made a crazy start to his career, and ever since then it's been just downhill to the point where now at Roma he's getting subbed off and getting apologies by Jose Mourinho after 16 minutes. And people don't know, Firms low key wanted Renato Sanchez at Milan this just because year. of the name and the yeah, aura. I agree. There's still like this. Aura around his name, the brother's finished, he's been finished. Like, teams like Roma are buying him. I mean, that's when you know you're finished. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not necessarily finished, but people are still thinking that he's this diamond in the rough gem that they could polish. But if, he's, he's what, 23 now, 24? He's, I think he might be a bit older. Than, actually, no, that sounds about right, because he was there. like 18 at Euro 2016, so no. 25, 25, but, 26. But the fact that there are players in his position that are leagues better than him that are younger than him just shows that he's not the player that people really thought he was when you hear Renato Sanchez it, you're you're automatically putting it in a slightly higher category than a guy like Wissam uh, Awar yeah Awar at one point was getting rumored to go to like some of the top teams in the world then never got that transfer and then just downhill 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 and the same for Renato Sanchez but he just became mid and if he was actually good he would have joined Lazio and not Roma but whatever with the 21st overall pick, Milli FC was going to pick between two players, but I'll be taking Dusan Vlaovic, the Juve legend, who has done nothing for the club, boys. He's overrated. First of all, nobody rates him. Second of all, he's not a legend. Juve legend, bro. You know that your club is mudded. Legend because... Who's, just because Milli said he's a legend, no one on is, our club thinks he's a legend. Is Vlaovic a Juve legend? No, he is For that isn't. money? For that price? He might he's be one a of the legend. Greats. He's, he's one of the greats. One of the greats. Maybe your best striker ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better than Ronaldo? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> no, but I think Vlaovic, I don't think it's done for him. I don't think it's done. I think he just needs to move away from Juve. Yeah, I think I agree too. I think Juve is the problem. But listen, he still has the juice. Chelsea were going after him last summer. They wanted a deal done. Couldn't get it done. Vlaovic still has interest from the Premier League. He's still considered one of the better players, but if you really watch this guy, man, it's it's a tough watch. I, I think he needs a league change. Like, Serie A is just not the right league fit for him. I think, like, a Bundesliga would be an amazing fit for him. But yet, somehow, he's still going to get sold for 60 million, 70 million. He's still going to get that big money move because he still has potential. I'm sorry, he's overrated. Millie, that's a bad pick. Let me hear your next one. My striker has been chosen. I'm going back to my defensive line. Give me for right back. Milli FC will select Kieran Trippier from Newcastle. The man is not good. I like the choice, Milly. Yeah, that is a good pick. I, I think low-key Trippier this season has been the worst maybe Prem player. Oy. <laughs> he has. He's costed Newcastle many, many, many games. Points. Yeah, so many points. So has, yeah. Okay, no, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> Guess. <laughs> Guess what I was about to say. Andre Onana. Yep. Thank no. You. No. You said it, not me. No, I didn't he's been it. insane. Trippi, Trippi has not been the player that he was uh, at any point in his career. This is probably the lowest point of his career, but somehow he's still, he's still getting call-ups for England. He's still one of the main players. I'm sorry, he's, he's overrated to me. I think he's very comparable to, let's say, like, he's a worse Trent, but this year he's been so bad that, like, his crossing, his crossing hasn't even been, like, that good. So what else are you offering? Like, leadership? Okay, good, but, like, there's not other enough. players, yeah. Not there's enough. other players you can. Well, offer obviously leadership. he's not doing much leading because Newcastle a bit have of a mess. Season. Yeah, but uh, I agree with the pick, Mila. I think that's a good choice. All right, Pala, you get to go next. I just hinted to my next pick, Andre Onana. It's so blatantly obvious. It's so blatantly obvious. This guy stinks. Stinks. It does not. Stink. Ederson is a much better ball playing goalie than Onana. <laughs> much better. Much you don't better. have any shame, bro. bro, bro I, take, it's, I don't need you. shame. Just because you try one million long balls because your team cannot get out of a press, if you succeed 50 of them, wow, he completed eight 
successful long balls. Do in the you game. have any shame, bro, bro? I'm spitting. I'm spitting. How many points? How many countless games has Andre Onana costed you guys this season? In the Premier League? Yes, points. A goal in the Premier League, cost maybe points. one. No, multiple points. But in the I, Champions League, he costed us qualification. I'll agree with you on there. But. In the Premier League, he's been solid. He's a horrible shot stopper. His reactions are... I'd rather Millie and Nets shot stopping wise. Millie's my Sunday League goalie, by the way. Oh my God. Oh my That's God. I, I wish I could play like Onana, but... It's like... For you guys to be justifying, one day you'll see the light the same way you saw with Maguire. Andre Onana is not going to be part of your future project. He is one of the cornerstones of what we should build upon. I'm glad because that's going to prove me years of just happiness watching you guys be mid. When Andre Onana is lifting his Champions League in the red colors of Manchester, we're going to come back to this and Pal is going to be worst take of the yeah. year contender. Given five years, he's going to be lifting the Turkish Cup when he's playing for Fenerbahce. Respect. Respect. Which, which, yeah, well, I'm saying right that Fener Fenerbahce, Rich, respect Fenerbahce. Varvar, you're up next. Let's see if you pick a Fenerbahce player. No Fenerbahce players coming anywhere near the overrated 11. They're all underrated because they're the best team in Turkey, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go for left back. Now, this player was hyped up this season, like, we thought this player was gonna drop a 10 out of 10 season, he's gonna be in this this team for 10 years plus be one of their club captains levi colwell oh. chelsea fans straight up lied straight to our face that this brother is a rolls royce center back and this guy is insane he's as good as van dyke i think he's very good take a step back he is mid he 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 has not shown anything special the brother was better at Brighton than he was at Chelsea. Okay, well, that's a different story. Brighton got away with murder. Yes, exactly. Summer. Exactly. Like multiple players, four, e three, four players. Exactly. And Colwell this season, he's been playing left back. Brother has nothing. He has not been special. He's been pretty mid. I want to give him a chance because I actually think he's very talented. I think Cucurella has been better than my left back and I hate Cucurella. That's a crazy shot. That is a wild shot. It's not that wild. And to follow him up, I'm going to take a cam. Any guesses? Bruno Fernandes. No, you wish. Fernandes. You say Bruno Fernandes also? For sure. It's Thomas Muller because the brother is still living off of his legacy. He is not a useful player anymore. He's not, not good at all. Brother, who? Who's like... What's the bar for the overrating to begin? Varvara, the, the underrated draft was two videos ago, my guy. <laughs> He's not underrated, was never underrated at any point. He was probably overrated his entire career. This guy does not know ball, man. <sighs> Same, yeah, no, oh my God. He, like, people like to say Thomas Muller, oh my God, what great instincts and stuff. When your best attribute is your instincts, that's that not means his best you're attribute. not good. That's not that his means best you're attribute. not good. He's at, okay, at his peak or right now? Right now, right think, now, and at his peak, I think he's been very stable for Bayern his entire the entirety of his career. Basically, he's been one of the most important players on one of the best teams of the last decade. Thomas Muller has not been impactful since COVID. He's not. Varvar with the Muller shout. I'm I'm not vibing with it. But Pala, let's see who you pick next. Varvar, you just got me amped up. Really kind of made me mad with that Valvet shout before. I was. <laughs> I was thinking about putting Cristiano Ronaldo as striker. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Unleash the hounds. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going with Lal Farto, Poop Tinez. This guy excels at absolutely nothing. When I think of a striker, I think of the complete opposite of this, of this. Ooh, La Farto. <laughs> I low-key agree with you. What? <laughs> He's not that good, bro. Not that good. He's not best player in I think Marcus Turam's better than him. <laughs> They're both, they both stink. <laughs> I don't understand stink. this guy's success. Inzaghi, you, oh, Inzaghi, you must be a very good manager to make this guy look like the best striker in Serie A. He was a good striker before Inzaghi. He wasn't. Yeah, very, he was. Very, very, very comparable, in my opinion, to Chido Immobile. I think no. he's very, like, no. Like, I think if you put, like, I'm talking about prime Chido. Don't compare Chido Immobile to a scrub like Lautaro. Oh Please my don't. goodness, that's Please ridiculous. Don't. Like, he's literally, He's, he's not doing much. Okay, okay. So who's who's been more productive? Lautaro or Vlaovic this season? Lautaro. Lautaro. Okay, that's all I need to hear. Okay, so congrats, bro. You, you win the you're battle comparing of a, You're comparing a guy to 
Vlaovic was, can barely even break our starting 11 these days. No. So it's not much of a comparison. Lautaro is the best striker in Serie A, like hands down. Unless you can but name me a better striker. Who, he's not what the best. What does that matter? Like you're what competing you against Giroud and Vlaovic and like, what's the competition, bro? Congratulations, Lautaro's been consistently good for Inter since he came. No. Yes. I just, bro, Conte wanted to but sell I'm an Interisti, no. so no. I think Lautaro's pretty decent, but. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> no problem. Do your thing. I just can't wait till Lautaro goes back to being bad next season because that's inevitably what's going to happen. New manager. Uh, he was carried by Lukaku also. <laughs> that's brutal. That's brutal. Millie, it's your choice. Are you going to pick uh, Tarab? I know it's my choice. Don't worry. Are you going to pick Tarab? Yeah, he's going to pick Milik. <laughs> Or Keen. Rabiot in my midfield is about to He's busy making music Martial. videos. Martial. <laughs> it's going to get to a point in the video where just enter Juve players. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> to complete my midfield, Mili FC will be taking Leon Goretzka, one of the most underwhelming players this season for Bayern, and people still rate him as one of the top midfielders in the world. Not, not bad. If McTominay was German, it would literally be Goretzka. <laughs> no, no. Yes. He's still living off that muscle hype from COVID, Champions League, Goretzka. Okay, listen, he was great. He was fantastic when they won Champions League, but what has he done since then to be even mentioned in these lists? Goretzka and McTominay are treacherous twins. They, they're literally just carbon copies of each other. They literally don't do anything. And low key, they don't do anything. He's still been better than Kimmich in midfield. Pay for some Bayern, respect so. to Manchester United's Premier League top goal scorer right now. Pay some respect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he is the he is your top scorer. Put some respect on my club's history to even disrespect us like that. Well, you mean shit. All right, boys, we have two positions left, and for my next pick, let me go goalkeeper. Give me the Arsenal man who was once the most expensive goalkeeper, apparently, Aaron Ramsdale. Cap. It's not Cap. I mean, he's supposedly a good shot stopper when Cap. the brother is not a good shot stopper. If you said Raya. Raya's no. way miles. Raya, there's a reason why Raya's though. starting. Because he's better. Raya is miles clear of Ramsdale. Like miles. I don't know. Maybe Nine I have a goal. bias towards Ramsdale because I don't even know why. But I think Ramsdale is still a very good goalie. Listen, Ramsdale, a bit of English tax, a bit of Prem tax. He gets a couple highlight reel stops here and there that somehow go viral on the internet. And he's somehow worth more than some of the top goalkeepers in the world. Like for me, he's just not there. And he's not even an out and out starter. Raya is getting more minutes than him right now. So... For me, I think he's nothing but overrated. But he seems like a great guy. And shout out to you for playing footy tic-tac-toe on uh, Twitter. That's true. On he's TikTok. a great guy, though. Yeah, great he's guy. a great guy. With Trent, though. no? Yeah, with Trent. Yeah, Those are our dogs right there. That's crazy. <laughs> they know ball. <laughs> but uh, that's a decent shout, Millie. I think his shot stopping carries him, but he's not even that good of a shot stopper. But great guy, though. Up next, it's my pick. My second to last pick. At left back, I know Varvar has hinted to this before. I'm going to go with Robertson. I didn't hint in this episode, but I, Robertson was definitely on my list. Definitely there. I agree. I don't think he's been that special. If I see one more one more FIFA year of him being a walkout, I'm going to pull my hair out. <laughs> okay, this, he's not that bad. He's no, good. but he's just nothing but like an 84. Okay, but Alfonso Davies is an 83 rated player. Oh, and Robertson's an 86. Yeah. Gotta, pff, they don't know. Yeah. Man. Luke hey. Shaw's an 83 rated player. Not saying that Robertson is bad. He's not bad at all. He's good. I would take him at most teams. Probably not Arsenal, but to think that he's at that level and Liverpool fans defend him till death, I just don't see the reason. I think he's really overrated. Good shout. And to follow a FIFA merchant up with another FIFA merchant, I'm going to take Donnarumma in goal because how this brother still gets 88 rated cards, 87 rated cards every single year is blasphemous to me yeah, that is see next crazy. year he won't get anything close to that we'll see we I, will see because if it's anything higher than like 84 it's a joke it is a joke he, i think that's a good. textbook pick though like like taking down a room overrated that's like he is the poster boy for overrated goalkeepers I, bad moves too that that's a player that lives off the hype off that euro hype that he yeah had. like he he's no, been nowhere near that level and look he was good at the euros but i wouldn't say he was insane and that that okay. clip when he won Brother, brother got famous off of a clip. He didn't even know he won the Euro. Uh, bro got famous <laughs> off a mistake. Yeah, it's not, it's not because he's cold or anything. It's because <laughs> he didn't know the game was over. <laughs> Donnarumma Varvar, very, very good shout. But you get the next pick. My last choice is a player that personally to me would have been around first overall. I know it's not the same for Pala and Millie. Oh, so he slipped. He slipped for me. He slipped. 
I would take Upamecano at center back because this brother, Bayern fans like to talk about him as if he's some like un unfound like gem, like, oh my God, Upamecano is one of the best center backs in the world. No, my brother, this guy is a walking mistake. I don't know about you guys, but- No, he does have brain farts, he, a lot of them. He's clumsy. He is so clumsy. This brother makes so many mistakes, a bit less recently. But the fact that this guy starts for the French national team over Saliba and Konate is just absolutely ridiculous to me. Saliba and Konate are four or five tiers above Upamecano. Like, it's like, you're not even in the same ballpark and Upamecano still gets that French recognition. I don't get it, whatever. He's hopping in my team. Bayern fans, you can read me in the comments all you like. I'm not reading it. I think that's a solid shout out. He's not the player, like, he's okay. At the end of the day, he's okay, but he's not one of the best, like maybe Bayern fans say. Pala, you get your final pick. I can't believe it took to my last pick to pick someone from AC Milan. I'm going with at center back Fikayo Tomori. Great pick. Thank Great you. Great pick. Thank you. Mo. Was on my list. Was on my list for for two reasons. <laughs> two me. Two reasons. Simple. He sucks, and he plays for Milan. That, that's all I need to hear. Yeah. That's probably the best pick of the draft. That's a master combo. You can't even debate that. <laughs> you can't even debate that. That's super effective. <laughs> I that was a critical hit. <laughs> Listen, in all seriousness, Tomori is not the defender that Milan fans prop him up to be. He's, I don't really think he's top 10 in Serie A, really, not even. He's the Serie A Ruben okay, Diaz. Whoa, he can not play with whoa, the ball. He's whoa. not. He is not. He Milly, is not. Okay, no, he's in the top 10. There's four on better on Inter. <laughs> no. Yeah, Tomori, if you're going to put him top 10, he's low top 10. Very low. Nothing higher okay. than six. He's good. He's not past the top 10 of Serie A center backs. That's absolutely would crazy. Would you take Gatti or would you take Tomori? Um, I can't answer. I'm pleading the fifth. <laughs> I'm pleading the fifth. Because Gatti's like, he's becoming low-key like a cult hero at Juve <laughs> because he scored two goals. But on the ball, brother, that guy cannot play. The big, but can't Tomori play the can't either. True. And Tomori gets beaten off the ball way too often. So I'm hearing Gatti better than Tomori shouts right here. But oh, and I think you just, gonna love that. You just like spoke me into it. <laughs> Anyway, Tomori, last piece of the puzzle. I love my team. Well, actually, I hate my team. <laughs> Before we get to the managers, this is the last player pick of the draft. I'm going Chelsea man. Give me Thiago Silva. He is not the center back he once was. He is not the player Chelsea should rely on, especially with a billion dollars worth of players they have on that squad. And you have a 38-year-old man in your back line. He's good, but he's not best in the prem good. I agree, and I don't know what this fixation is with Chelsea fans that they love Thiago Silva so much. The brother, they, they think they got prime Thiago Silva. He's just living off name now. It's like Sergio Ramos at hey, Sevilla. I don't think they think that, at, like whatsoever. I think they're just happy to have a guy that knows what he's actually knows what he's doing, has been playing for a very long time, low-key like a leader for that back line, someone to like look at and see what to do. But I don't mind Thiago Silva again, being in that team. I don't that's mind. why he's rated because he's a leader. Once again, when your top quality is leadership, that but it means isn't. you stink. But it isn't. It isn't. He makes serious IQ plays because he has the experience. How many block shots? How many... Thiago Silva all is the, not... All the useless qualities, he takes them off. Ramos, Ramos must be the greatest center back of all time today because <laughs> of that. Because of his experience and leadership. To say he's overrated means that people rate him to a extremely high level, which is not the case for Thiago Silva. It is. I think a lot that of, is the case. A lot of Chelsea fans say he's like the best center back in the Premier League, almost. Like top. Like he's there. Yeah, no. Come e on. Ye old, ye old. A lot of Twitter fans say this. They do. Chelsea. They Chelsea Twitter is... They support that guy. For no reason. No. Now we are picking our managers. I get the first pick. Give me the Barca man. Xavi. The man is not good. That's why I'm picking him. That's a quick and simple minute rice. He did a minute rice of explanations. <laughs> less than a minute rice. He's not good. Let's get to the next one. Beep, beep, beep. My career, your rice is ready. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, to, to just like, to just say that without context, wild. Fourth, fourth in La Liga with Barcelona. The brother has underwhelmed in almost every single season other than last season. He's not that guy. He's so not that guy. Three seasons, three seasons underwhelmed and all the seasons. Very, very season. comparable to Ole at Man United. Like, same vibes. Literally, same vibes. Stinky, stinky shouts. Anyway, my manager pick, and it's like kind of left field because he's, he's not a club manager, Gareth Southgate. 
oh, how many debates I've had about this manager. He's a good manager. He, he is, is a good manager. horrible. He's no, horrible. he's a good manager. Horrible. Xavi coaching England would look like, oh my God, this no. is Zinedine Zidane, two peak, uh, three peak Champions League. Tactically, he's not there. Okay, he's not so at the top in the level. most important part of being a manager, he just That's doesn't wrong. succeed. That's no. wrong. Because there's there's managers who are insane tactically, but just aren't there management-wise. Like, he has always... England have been, outside of France, the most consistent country. Yes. The most consistently bad country. No, no, man, no. Quarterfinals, semifinals, they made your final years. No other English manager has done that even with a golden era. Exactly. Okay, nobody. And how successful has he been? He... England standards, he's been the most successful modern manager. And has won absolutely nothing. He One did. of the best... One of the best teams England has had in a long time. No. Every position Look, stacked, I'm not two, saying, three players. I'm not saying he's the optimal manager, but he, he's a good... You know what you're getting with him. Hor horrible. He's, he's just not good. Please. I'll, I'll give you an actual overrated manager. Give me, obviously, this might be the most obvious pick of the draft, Jose Mourinho, because this brother is so done. He's been finished for a decade now, was not good at Man United, was not good at Spurs, is not good at Roma. I mean, how many jobs does his brother need to show you that he is finished? I'm tired of reacting to Varvar saying Jose Mourinho is overrated. Because he stinks. He's my number one enemy. You're classically, you're classically conditioning us to just know that you're going to say he's the most overrated manager. And there we have it. Here are our teams for the most overrated 11. Let us know who you think should be in these overrated 11 teams. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace out.